What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and WhatsApp is giving their users an ultimatum. So if you're using WhatsApp on iOS or uh, Android, you might have getting this message, which says, essentially says, hey guys, we're updating our privacy policy and you have to agree. There is no option to disagree. If you, if you don't agree within a month, we're well, gonna just delete your account and uh, you cannot use WhatsApp anymore. And uh, in this video, what I wanna go through is what WhatsApp exactly are collecting uh, from you, information, what are the information that I actually see and they uh, collect from you, and what are they sharing with Facebook? And this is all so you guys can make a better decision whether you wanna continue your service with WhatsApp or Use a better uh, privacy advocate uh, messaging system, which is uh, such as Signal or Telegram or other uh, messages. As um, and feel free to um, recommend one of these uh, messaging systems, guys. So, how about we jump into their privacy policies and uh, kind of read what exactly are they collecting? Very quick, guys. Before we jump into this and we read through this. I want to let you know that WhatsApp, I talked about WhatsApp as an end-to-end -end encryption messaging system. Uh, check out the video right here. And uh, WhatsApp is using end-to-end -end encryption. It's using the Signal protocol built by Moxie, uh, which built the Signal protocol and the Signal app, right? So it is an end-to-end -end encryption. You might say, Hussein, why are you so sure WhatsApp is closed source and we don't really know if it's end-to-end -end encryption? Well, we have some people go there and check out and audit the uh, WhatsApp source code and they actually confirm that it, it is using the signal protocol. So we, at least we can take the word for it that they are using end-to-end -end encryption. And when I say end-to-end, -end, that means if I am uh, uh, sending a message, I am Alice and I want to send a message to Bob, uh, I'm going to exchange a key between me and Bob. And once we both get that same key, which WhatsApp can never see, then uh, I can use that key to encrypt my picture, my voice note, my chat, and send it to WhatsApp server because they are essentially a router and they will route that encrypted message blindly to Bob. They cannot read it. They cannot see what's in it. Okay, so let's go. That, that being said, and you can verify that with, the, with their identity system, essentially, as they claim. So uh let's go through that guys and uh just just uh, this is just one one part that is really really essentially ironic at best right this statement right respect for your privacy is coded into our dna maybe that was before uh facebook whatsapp right before 2014 i don't know about that because when when you guys see the amount of information that i'm gonna say here in this video You'll be gonna, you're gonna be surprised. Maybe you're not gonna be surprised, but saying that privacy is just ridiculous. So let's go through it. <laughs> so there is information that you provide for us, right? WhatsApp. Oh, when I say us, I mean WhatsApp, right? And there is information that is automatically collected here. Okay. So we're gonna go through these two parties because they, they it's very important to distinct that information that just you don't directly produce like device stuff and performance and diagnostics and logs. And there's information that you type in, like your, your profile picture or name or phone number. So let's go through them. The first information that you provide and they collect, your account information. You provide your phone number to create a WhatsApp account and you provide the phone numbers along the, in, the, in the address box. You give access to the address book, right? And when you give the access to the address book, all your contacts sent to WhatsApp. So they know your phone number, they know your contacts' phone numbers, and they can link this phone number to Facebook if you have that information there. They can essentially link you there. Yeah. They have access to your profile name, and they use that information. They have access to your profile picture, and they use that information. They use uh, the status message in WhatsApp. I don't know. That I, I don't think anybody uses that, in my opinion. There's like a status message that you can update in WhatsApp, uh, which tells you like, I don't know, like, hey, I'm here. I, um, I, 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 whatever, I ate Pringles yesterday, whatever. You can, you can update that message. 
Okay. So, so that, that information they use and they essentially ran uh, ads against, right? So for example, if you update your status message like, oh, just had the big, the best pepperoni pizza from New York pizza, uh, pizzeria, right? So the fact that you type this in your status message, again, this is not a message that you send in a status message, they can use this information and show you an ad for the Alfredo uh, Pizza Cafe, right? From the office. In, in Facebook, right? They can show you an ad because you like pizza. Your messages. Let's go through this because this is very critical. And I'm, 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 well, I'm going to save my, my opinion in the end. So technically, guys, when you say your messages, messages should not be read by WhatsApp because it's an end to end encryption. If I send you a message, it's an end to end encryption. Nobody can read and see, right? So if I, if I am chatting with, with Bob about uh, gluten-free uh, dog treats, Facebook is not going to show me uh, Blue's uh, brand of the gluten-free treats, right? It's not going to do that because the messages technically is encrypted. So WhatsApp cannot know what is on messages. That's, that's what we at least claim here, allegedly, right? So let's read through this. We do not return your messages in, in the ordinary course of providing our services to you. Once your messages, including your chat, photos, videos, voice messages, files, and share location information are delivered, they are deleted from our services, from our servers. That means if you send a message that is encrypted technically, right? Uh, server, uh, WhatsApp is going to get a, mess, a copy of this encrypted message. But what is Bob? What if Bob is offline? It's gonna save that message temporarily until until uh, Bob is online, so it can technically push that content to it and then mark it as delivered. And then once it's delivered, they can delete it from there yeah, because that's that's how how durability and consistency in databases work, right? We need we need to store it somewhere, even if it's encrypted. And technically, they can store information encrypted. Nothing stopping them from doing that. They can store it. If the message is undelivered after 30 days, we delete it. Sorry. Here's the part that confused the shit out of me, guys. And for the longest time, I have no idea how they do this. Guys, if, if anyone can really know how to do it, please let me know. Let's go through this. To improve performance and deliver media messages more efficiently, such as when many people are sharing a popular photo or a video, we may retain that content on our servers for longer period of time. Wait a second, guys. How on earth do you know that a photo is popular? How do you know that it's a photo? Maybe there's metadata. But how do you know that this is actually a video that is popular? Wait a second. How? If I, guys, if I take a message and I use my key and encrypt that message and I send it to you, it's going to look a certain way. But if I take the same exact file or message and I use another key to encrypt it, it's going to look completely different. So there is no way if two people sending the same file for WhatsApp to know that this is the same picture, video, chat, voice note. There is no way without decrypting that message. Are you guys saying that you are decrypting popular messages? There is clear discrepancy in this statement and very, very concerning. Please explain, explain to me, right? I want someone to tell me how Two people with two different symmetric keys sending the same message, right? How, how, do you, how do you know that it's a different message? How do you know if it's the same message? It's impossible, right? I mean, I know there is homomorphic encryption, but I doubt that WhatsApp are doing homomorphic encryption, that IBM, uh, homomorphic encryption, if you don't know, that you can do operations on an encrypted message, but without actually decrypting it. But I doubt they are doing that. Otherwise, they were going to see that. They were going to say that. 
We also offer end-to-end -end encryption for our services. Why did you say also? That's vague as F, man. Which is on by default. Okay, so it is on by default. That means everything is encrypted, but what we just read is completely contradicting what you guys just saying. When you and the people with whom you message use a version of our app released after April 2, 2016. Who the heck is using an app from 2016? For God's sake. 2016, it's 2021. And people, everyone use auto updates. So everyone has the latest. So everyone is using into encryption. Into an encryption means that your messages are encrypted to protect against us, which is WhatsApp and third party from reading them. So I have no idea. If they did not see this to improve this message, to, to improve this performance, I would have believed that it is completely encrypted. But the fact that they said to improve performance and deliver media more efficiently, they retain it for longer. How do you know that a picture is popular? I really want to know. Unless they have some other metadata? I don't know, man. I don't know. There might be other metadata that tells them that this is actually a popular message. I'd like to see a technical details on this one. I'd love to see it because I, I truly, and guys, let's, let's think this together. Right? I'm, I'm giving WhatsApp the benefit of the doubt, obviously, here, right? I know people will say, no, they decrypted. I, no, we're engineers. We like to kind of poke our heads and think before we actually act, right? So... I honestly don't know how they are, uh, uh, how do they know if, it, if a message is popular, right? Unless that device itself maybe marks that it's a popular, I guess. I guess there's into, and maybe, maybe it's possible, guys. Now, the more I think about it, maybe it's possible. The, the devices themselves, before you send it, you send metadata that, hey, by the way, this, this encrypted thing is actually popular. I don't know. Your connections. To help you organize how you communicate with others, we create a favorite list of your contacts for you. And you can create, join, or get added to groups or broadcast lists. And such a group and list get associated with your account. So groups are public, apparently, and uh, they keep track of whom are you communicating with most. So they know that if you're chatting with someone a lot, they know that, oh, you're sending a lot of messages to this guy. I, we, they don't need to see the message, but, but they know that uh, they are, you're communicating with this person a lot. Com customer support. So if you connected with the customer support, any information, we retain it. Automatically collected information. Usage and log information. We collect service-related diagnostic performance information. This includes information about your activity, such as how you use our services, how you interact with others using our services, and the like. Log files and diagnostic, crash, website, performance logs, and report. So how do you interact with others using our service? So how do you click on a Profile picture of someone, expand it. They send that for the, the fact that you actually zoom in to some your contact pictures. I know some of you do that. And uh, yeah, crash if your app crashes. So if your apps produce logs, they all see that stuff. Transactional information. If you pay for our services, we may receive information and confirmations such as payments, receipts, including from app stores or other third parties processing your payments. Okay, payment information. So what, what, what do you pay through WhatsApp? Just curious. Device and con connection information. We collect device specific information when you install, access, or use our service. So they know you're using an iPhone uh, 10 and you installed this operating system, and you install this version of the app, they know the hardware model, they know your IP address, uh, African da, mobile network information, including phone number, device identifiers. We collect device location information 
if you use our location feature. So if you share your location with other through WhatsApp, that's when the iOS will pop uh, that say, hey, WhatsApp want to use your location. Do you want to allow it? Or it's using it in the background. Do you want to allow it? That's when you say, nah. Such as when you share uh, your location. Okay, I just said that. Cookies. So when I, when I read cookies, like cookies, how the hell cookies has to do anything with a mobile app? So cookies, this, is, this section is specifically to the web app, to WhatsApp's web app, right? From the, your desktop uh, browser, right? And uh, if you connect to WhatsApp and you log in, they set a, a cookie in your WhatsApp.com domain so that if you go to Facebook, that cookie will be sent as a third-party cookie to WhatsApp to identify that, hey, uh, 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 this guy just connected to, uh, to Facebook and uh, the, they essentially use the WhatsApp account. So they actually know you now by sending that information that you just logged into Facebook and they can do stuff with that information. And not just Facebook, pretty much any, any site as long as the cookie is same site equal, like it's, it's a, it's a, it has the same site property where it allows it to send it from a third party, then it's gonna be sent, right? If the same site equal, I believe, uh, none, right? That's, that's when it actually gets sent. So yeah, cookies, right? That's, that's for people using the app in the web browser. I guess, uh, do I have to go on? <laughs> is, this, is this enough for you guys to move to another messaging system? <laughs> Oh, status information. We collect information about your online and status messages changes on our services, such as whether you are online, your online status. So if you open the WhatsApp app, you turn online, right? You read a message, you just read a message. Uh, you went offline, you, you actually have your device turned off, then you're offline because WhatsApp just turned on by itself. You cannot just sign in and sign up. There is no option for that. So you're always online. When you last used our services, your last scene, they share your last scene. Oh, uh, that's a very critical piece. When was the last scene? Okay, this guy. So imagine this, guys. Facebook can know when have you been last seen from WhatsApp, right? And then Instagram is linked to that. They can share, they can decide based on WhatsApp, your last scene of WhatsApp, to send you a piece of notification on Instagram to let you see certain information based on that. They can use all of this information to that. That being said, guys, uh, that was the privacy policy of WhatsApp. Uh, sorry it took longer than it should, but uh, some, bar, some, some components of this privacy is, is does, doesn't make sense to me. But as engineers, we should we should keep giving them the uh, the benefits of the doubt. I guess obviously, guys, there is no argument that WhatsApp is obviously using all this kind of information. So it's not really a privacy app per se. That it doesn't their persona don't scream privacy, right? This, we just looked at every possible thing. Yeah, we don't read your messages, but we do all this other stuff too. So yeah. So uh, as an engineer, the engineer in me is very curious about how would they detect, again, taking our emotions out of the equation, right, guys? And just think about it, just an engineering aspect of that. Our engineering uh, comrades on WhatsApp and how did they build an app that, uh, so, such that they identify a popular viral message that despite it being encrypted, if you, let's just take some time in the comments and think about a design of how would you build something like this without decrypting the actual message. I can think of a way or two to do that, but I'd just like to uh, kind of have a discussion on the comment section and kind of let's learn from each other. This is, this is really interesting, guys. And uh, guys, what do you think about WhatsApp policy? Are you continuing using WhatsApp or are you moving to a completely different messaging system? Uh, um, let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.